Right, we have the 2013 Intermediate 2 Maths Units 1, 2 and 3 paper. This will be probably be a good revision for you if you do National 5 in 2014. So we'll get stuck into the non-calculator paper straight away. Question number one, factorise 6AB minus 7BC. So as always, write down the question. Look for a common factor here. We've got a B in both, so take B outside the bracket. Then the first term, B times this bit here will make 6AB. So B times 6 is 6B. B times 6A will be 6AB. Then we're subtracting. Then B times 7C will be 7BC. That's number one done. One mark. Hopefully quite straightforward. Question two, you've got the graph there. Crossing at 0, 4 and 3, 0. Find the equation of the straight line AB. So we go about that. We find the gradient, which is M. We find the y-intercept, which is C. So I've written down up over along here. Some teachers might tell you to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All y2 minus y1 done, does is find out how far up. Uh, the graph has gone between the two points. x2 minus x1 finds out how far along it's gone. Have a quick look here. Moving left to right, we've actually gone down 4. So this is a height of 4, down to 0. And again, moving left to right, we've started at 0, gone to 3. So we've gone 4 down, 3 along. So the gradient is minus 4 over 3. And that's it. We can leave it as a fraction. Value of C, the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis is, well, 0, 4 this point here, so it crosses at 4. 0, 4 means none along 4 up. And once we have M and C, we just put it into the form y equals mx plus C. So M is minus 4 thirds, C is 4, so y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 4. Question number 3. The diagram below shows sector of a circle centre C. The radius of the circle is 5 centimetres and angle ACB is 72 degrees. Calculate the length of arc AB. Take pi to be 3.14. Well, we have part of the circumference of the circle. There are 360 degrees in a full turn. We have 72 degrees here. So as a fraction of the whole circle, we have 72 out of 360, 72 over 360. So the arc would be whatever the angle is divided by 360 times pi d. As I was saying, that's 72 over 360. Again, that's just the fraction. And the radius was 5, so the diameter is double that, which will be 10. This cancels down to 1 fifth. So we'll have 1 fifth times pi times 10. When you're multiplying, you can do it in any order, so you don't need to do a fifth of 3.14. You can do a fifth of 10, or a fifth times 10 means a fifth of 10, which is 2, times pi. And as it said in the question, take pi to be 3.14, 2 times that, 6.28. So the important bit there, do a fifth times 10 to make life easy for yourself. Fifth times 10 is 2, same as a fifth of 10. Question number four. Solve algebraically the system of equations 2x minus y equals 10, 4x plus 5, y equals 6. So simultaneous equations question, hopefully you noticed that. So I'm going to call them the two that were given, equation one and equation two. I need to make the coefficient, the amount of x's, or the coefficient, the amount of y's, the same or equal. So I have 4x plus 5y here. If I double the top one, I'll have 4x minus 2y equals 20. Note at the side I've done that. I uh, called that equation 3, sorry, it's a different equation. And I've written down at this side that I'm doing equation 1 times 2. So I'm making it really obvious what's going on there. Now, I have 4x and 4x. I'm trying to eliminate that. Because they're the same, I need to subtract them to eliminate them. So I'm going to do equation 2, subtract equation 3. So 4x, subtract 4x is 0. 5, subtract negative 2y. A minus minus is a plus, so that's really 5 add 2y is 7y. 
6 subtract 20 minus 14. And I've just said there that I've done equation 2, take away equation 3. So 7y is a negative 14, divide through by 7, y is negative 2. So I've got the value for y, I want the value for x. I'm going to substitute back into either 1 or 2, I'm just going to pick 1. So substitute y equals negative 2 into equation 1, so it becomes, rather than 2x minus y, it becomes 2x minus minus 2 equals 10. Uh, minus minus is a plus, so 2x plus 2 is 10. Take 2 from both sides, 2x equals 8. Divide through by 2, x equals 4. So we've got the value of y and the value of x, and that's us done. Question 5. So we're given a circle with some triangles in it. We've got a tangent to the circle here. Uh, calculate the size of angle PQR. So I've drawn this one out. It's easier just to do it as we go along. So angle PQR, find out angle PQR. Well, P to Q to R will be that angle there. So if I can work out this angle and this angle, I can add them together to get PQR. Now we have the diameter of a circle. If we have a triangle made with the diameter of the circle and the side opposite the diameter touching the circumference, we always get a right angle. And that would also happen in the bottom triangle. I know this is 37, that's 90. There are 180 degrees in a triangle, so 37 and 90 is 127. Take that from 180. That one there would be 53. Down here, the diameter touches a tangent. Where that happens, we get 90 degrees. So 68, add this angle here, will come to 90, again, because it's a right angle. So that will be 22. And again, 180 degrees in a triangle here, that's 22, that's 90. 22 out 90 is 112. So that will be 78. No, it won't, it'll be 68. So angle PQR is 53 at 68 which is 121. That's that one done. Some questions like that, I would suggest sketching out well drawn it. Hopefully you've got a protracting exam or a pair of compasses. If not, just a half decent diagram. Make it obvious where these numbers are coming from. Yep. Question number six. Stem and leaf diagram question. So it's talking about the number of minutes on average spent on homework per night by a group of first year pupils. So this 1 bar 0 means 10, 1 bar 5 means 15, so run through the first line, that's 10, 15, 15, 15, 15 20, 21, 22, 22 and so on. And n equals 30, that means there are 30 people in the survey, there's 30 values in the stem and leaf diagram. Part A, using the above data, find the median. Well, as n's 30, that means if we split it up into two groups, we're going to have the first 15 there, the second 15 there, so the, the median value, the middle value, is going to be right in between the 15th and the 16th value. So I just count along in my diagram, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, they're both 35, right in the middle of 35 is 35. Ah, done a bit wrong. Oops. Right, part two, the bottom half. Well, there's 15 values in the bottom half because we split these up into 15 and 15. So for 15 values, there'll be seven, then one in the middle, then another seven. So we're looking for the eighth value. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that'll be 22. Got that one right. 
And part three, the eighth value in the top half. Again, there's 15 values in the bottom half, so it'll be 15 in the top half, so we're looking for the eighth value in the top half. And there's 15 in the bottom half, so that's a 23rd value along. So if we count along to the 23rd value, we get 39. And as I've just noticed a mistake up here, this will be not 30, but 35. Explain why in a second. Part B, draw a box plot to illustrate this data. So at the end of a box plot, we have the lowest value, which is 10. The highest value is 50. That's the whisker at the other end. Q1 is the start of the box, 22. I've done that one wrong as well. Excellent. Q2 is the, mid, the median value, which is the middle of the box, which is 35, and Q3 is the end of the box, which is 39. So a bit of an adjustment there, just to make sure that's definitely not part of the answer. If it's an exam, I'd probably get a rubber out. Uh, and we've also got a title, I've got an appropriate scale along the bottom. Got the boxes, so it'll be one mark for the box and the whiskers, one mark for an appropriate skill. A group of fourth year pupils was surveyed, should that not be worth surveyed? To find out how many minutes on average they spent on homework per night, the box plot below was drawn for this data. Compare the two box plots and comment. So when you're comparing box plots, you look at the median. Here the median is 42, and the one that I've just drawn it's 35. So here the median is higher, so we'd say the average of this group is higher. In other words, the S4 spend more time on average on their homework. And we also look at the spread. Here we're looking from 10 up to 50. Here we're looking at 28 up to 60. So the spread's greater here, the spread's 40 here. So the time spent by S1 is more varied, bracket spread out. So you're just comparing it, comparing the spread, which is the range, or you could compare an interquartile range if you wanted to, and you're comparing the average time or the median time. Number seven. Nice bit of algebra. Simplify this. If you have done plenty of revision, you will probably know that we'll have to simplify it, that one of the factors of this is going to be x plus 4. Otherwise, we couldn't simplify it. But we'll do it properly anyway. So we're looking for a pair of numbers that multiply together to make 20 and add together to make negative 1. So 5 4s are 20. If I've got a 5 and a 4, I can make minus 1. It would be 4 subtract 5. So... On the bottom I've got x plus 4, x minus 5, and on the top, just to make it easy to simplify, instead of writing bracket squared, I've got bracket times bracket. And as I've already done, cancel out that one and that one, and we're just left with this. There we go. Question number 8. State the period of y equals sin 2x. The period is basically how many complete waves we have in 360 degrees. No, it's not. It's the length of a wave, sorry. And the 2 tells us that we will have 2 complete waves in 360. So if we do 360 divided by 2, that will tell us how long one wave is. And that is the period of the wave, 180 degrees. Test for number 9. The parabola question can sometimes be a little bit nasty, but I thought this one wasn't too bad. Diagram below shows part of the graph y of y equals 20 minus bracket x minus 4 bracket squared. Part A, state the coordinates of the maximum turning point. Well, it's normally written as bracket squared plus a number at the end, but the order doesn't actually matter. So the 20 outside the bracket 
and it's positive says it moves up 20. Again, looking at the diagram, it's above the x-axis, so quite happy that that's going to be a positive value, so up 20. We look inside the bracket here, and a minus 4 moves it 4 to the right, so it'll be 4 along, so it normally goes through 0, 0. And again, we know it's over here, so the fact I'm getting 4 is good. If I was getting, if I thought it was minus 4, I'd be thinking, well, the graph's over here, but it's not minus 4 because it's positive 4. So it's in the right place for my solution. And it's not in the question, but the minus sign that just flips it over makes it a sad face graph rather than a happy face graph. So that's why it's upside down. So we've basically gone 20 up and 4 along, so it'll be 4, 20. 4 along 20. Right, part B, state the equation of the axes of symmetry. Well, the axes of symmetry would be here. And that'll be 4 along. And anywhere on this line, the x coordinate is 4. So it's just x equals 4. Right, number 10, sketch the graph of y equals sin bracket x minus 90 degrees. So the sin graph normally looks like that, starting at 0 up to 90, back down to 180, 270, 360. This x, the minus 90 in the bit, just like the minus 4 bit up here, moved it 4 to the right. The minus 90 bit will move it 90 to the right. So rather than start at 0, this bit here isn't, isn't going to be 0 on the graph, it's going to be at 90. So as you can see, I've drawn the graph already, and instead of 0, this is going to be 90, 180, 270, 360. And if we notice, we're missing a bit here, because the question says between 0 and 360. So we know that these graphs just kind of keep on going on and on and on in both directions. So then I'll just add in my axes. Got the x there, and there's no number at the front of the sin, so it's not going to go any higher than 1 or any lower than minus 1. So there we go, that's going to be 0. It's going to look like that. And that is paper 1.